All right, guys, we're going to welcome back to you for the cultural podcast today. I'll be doing my preview and prediction for Kansas State versus Colorado. Very important matchup going down in the Big 12 Saturday night, 10 15 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. Live from Boulder, Folsom Field. Kansas State, six point favorites, 56 and a half is the total. Anything started with the visitors, the KSU offense, you know, Avery Johnson in this unit, they, you know, were not all that good. A couple weeks back in a major upset loss at BYU. Well, they quite frankly all blown out, 38-9, to largely on the heels of just a lot of mistakes on the offense. The defense didn't allow really too much at all other than just being put in bad positions based on what the offense did. And that was, you know, Avery Johnson playing very poor. You know, back against BYU, had 130 and two picks, rebounded against Oklahoma State, 259 and three touchdowns. Both are season highs for him. And obviously this is a work in progress for him in terms of his abilities as a passer. Now his nine touchdowns and four picks on the year. Tremendous runner. 60 yards and two scores on only five attempts against Oklahoma State. You know, they won that game pretty handily, putting up 40-plus points. So they bounce back big time. They get a bye week as well coming into this matchup. So the Kansas State offense seems like they're going to have some momentum to ride on. You certainly hope Avery can keep that. Uh, you know, confidence in store. But he has a very good runner, though. You know, 300 plus rushing this year, seven yards per attempt, two scores. I mean, this is a guy who is a very talented player, nice dual threat abilities. He has uh, tremendous speed as well. Um, so very encouraging stuff from the young sophomore quarterback. A little bumpy start to the season. You know, the passing attack's just not for, not, not for them in terms of trying to win games. They want to be able to grind out the run game with versatility speed and whatnot um you know the receiving game though they have some guys you know jakes brown's a speedster 277 yards keegan johnson finally starting to kind of emerge for them as the second leading pass catcher Braden lofton has 93 yards and two touchdowns alongside garrett oakley you know very good tight end duo there two sophomores i'm a big fan of uh lofton not playing in the last game and likely won't be playing in this one either. Um, so, you know, that's one guy they're going to be down with. You know, I certainly think that um, Oakley's a good tight end that we had touched down in his absence. Uh, so this is just not that deep of a receiving group. And, and, you know, we'll go back to the rushing attack because this is really the bread and butter for this football team led by DJ Giddens. So I think it's just a phenomenal back in all regards. 604 yards, two touchdowns, has, you know, abilities as a pass catcher as well. So you'll probably see him start to get a lot of more targets. You know, most of his production in the receiving game came all the way back in week two against Tulane. Uh, 120 yards rushing for him this year. He was kind of the lone bright spot against BYU, so he was still taking care of business. Then he had, you know, 187 yards and a long touchdown against Oklahoma State. You know, I think, uh, you know, this one-two punch of him and Dylan Edwards will eventually start to become a really good one. You know, Edwards going on the road, playing his former team, transferring out of Colorado. Seven yards per attempt this year as a rusher. Hasn't been used as much as you would have liked the hope because I certainly think this is a highly explosive player. Probably could have been in a bit of a Deuce Vaughn type role, you know, being 5'9, 167. Um, he only has seven receptions for 37 yards. So, yeah, this is a player I think needs to see an expanded role for the benefit of this offense. They're putting up 252 yards rushing per game, though. They've not been stifled at all, even against BYU. They still put up a pretty fair number on the ground. Very good rushing attack going up against a defense that has you know, certainly been much improved against the run. I um, mean, you saw them play UCF just a couple weeks ago, and they completely stifled them, and that offense could do nothing. Kansas State, I think they have better abilities than the Knights did, so even if they do struggle a little bit on the ground, they can definitely start to make plays through the air. You know, just slightly, not too many. At least the threat is there, I guess you could say, even though it's not typically going to be an explosive passing attack. Looking up front, you know, Easton Kiltley, left tackle, having a great year in pass protection. Hadley Panzer, you know, veteran. It's having an all right season for them. Sam Hecht at center, great year so far. Taylor Portier as well at right guard. And then right tackle being occupied by Carver Willis, who's been you know, pretty abysmal in pass protection, but he's a solid run blocker for them. This is a good offensive line, though. You know, they're built on physicality. They've been very good in pass protection. Certainly not as many dropbacks as many other teams. Um, but uh, Kansas State offense, they have adequate balance because they do enough through the air. Uh, and I'm, I'm making it sound like this is an ancient offense, and it's really not because they did just have a great game against Oklahoma State. Pretty bad defense there, but, I mean, this is a team that throws the ball about you know, 20, 25 times a game. They're usually somewhat efficient and certainly allows them to thrive on the ground. So very good offense here. You just hope they can have the same urge against Oklahoma State and Arizona 
even against Tulane compared to the BYU game, where it just seems a bit like a fluke. But again, last time they went on the road, weren't all that great. Before that, they were on the road in Louisiana against Tulane. Probably should have lost that game. So this has not been a great road team thus far. Maybe the bye week will help. Now you move to a Colorado offense that's putting up 31 points per game this season, coming off probably its best effort before the bye against UCF, just in terms of balance. Uh, we'll start with Shadur Sanders, though, 70% completion rating, 14 touchdowns, three picks. You know, a legitimate NFL caliber quarterback. This is a guy who's highly accurate. It's a heck of a playmaker. Sees the field well. Um, does a good job against pressure. You know, he's not just Deion's son. We've been saying this for a while. This is a legit quarterback. People can't admit that. It's just kind of ridiculous because he has a good quarterback. 290 yards against UCF and three scores. He's been, you know, a technician really through the air. This is a tough passing attack to slow down. Only has three interceptions on the year. Uh, had a bad pick six against Nebraska. Had a bad one early on against UCF. And then the one against North Dakota State was a pair of fluke. So he really only has two interceptions this year. Does a great job of taking care of the football. And, of course, it starts with, uh, you know, you know, a foursome of wide receivers. It's probably the best in the country, starting with Travis Hunter, the current Heisman favorite due to his abilities on both sides of the ball. 561 yards and six scores, nine receptions, 112 yards per game for him. Jimmy Horn, 327. Hasn't done much since the opener, but he certainly is still an explosive playmaker. Can make his presence felt. LeJounte Wester starting to see more of an amplified role in this offense as of late. Um, you know, pretty consistent player, I'd say, but he's a guy who can command a lot of targets and be effective. And then Will Shepard, a guy who I think is probably one of the most talented receivers in this conference, just hasn't really been able to you know emerge yet. Is coming off the best game of the year at UCF, though. We had 99 yards and a score. Um, he was great at Vanderbilt. I think he's a highly talented player. Um, you know, Marion Miller, he only has two receptions on the year for 71 yards. Both of them coming against Baylor. His efforts were highly needed. So they have plenty of different options here at wide receiver. It's a very good passing attack. They're incredibly difficult to slow down. Um, I think for Colorado, though, biggest thing for them is can this rushing attack, you know, stay hot? You know, 128 yards for them on two touchdowns. I mean, this is probably the best uh, we've ever seen in terms of balance since Dion took over. The run game's just been non-existent. Even before the UCF game, they weren't really all that sharp. 109 yards over across the other four games was the highest mark all season. Pretty sure they were dead last, if not right next to it, in terms of rushing offense before UCF. And this certainly helps. Um, Isaiah Augusta, you know, Michael Welsh, Dallin Hayden, you know, this has kind of been the running back group they've been opting with. Um, so it's encouraging to see them play that good. The offensive line played a much better game against the Knights. Was it a one-off, though? We'll see. I think this is certainly a very complete effort they put up. Jordan Seaton and left tackle, the true freshman. You're going to struggle at the end of the day, but he's been playing very good ball as of late over, you know, in terms of entire body work. It hasn't been pretty, but again, you're a true freshman playing college football at one of the hardest positions, so, I mean, no knock on him, really. At left guard, you know, it's really not been good. Tyler Brown, Justin Mayers, whenever he's been playing, it's been an area of weakness for him. Hank Zelinskas, you know, pretty undersized center, really doesn't provide much. Khalil Benson, you know, guy been giving up a lot of pressures at his right guard spot. Then a right tackle, it's kind of been few different guys playing. Phillip Houston, Tyler Brown as well. Um, not anything better. I mean, this is an offensive line that just still isn't all that good. I think they're pro somewhat progressing. Um, they're still amongst the bottom of FBS and sacks allowed, though. 18 total through five contests. 126 in FBS. So this is an offensive line that's a work in progress still, even though they were a little encouraging after the UCF game in terms of consistency. What are we going to see from them? I'm not sure, but for this team to be able to, you know, accomplish what they have so far with bad of an O-line is certainly very impressive. If you had a somewhat, you know, more consistent O-line, what could they do more in terms of production? I think it'd be pretty scary. So this is you know, still a good Colorado offense. It's explosive. It's dynamite. It's fun to watch. They're hard to get off the field, and they're just hard overall to slow down in the middle of the field with all the playmaking they have. Now you move to a Kansas State defense, only giving up 336 yards per game. You know, if a lot of people just looked at the final score of the BYU game, you would assume the defense is no good and they just got ran all over. That's not the case at all. 241 yards allowed and only 48 plays. I mean, every time um, BYU had the ball, it was in plus territory. They only had one drive of 40-plus yards, I believe, in that game. It was you know, like a 12-play drive for a field goal. Um, the offense just kept gift wrapping on possessions. They had a bad punt return TD they allowed. This defense wasn't at fault one bit for how this game went. I mean, this is still a very sound unit against Oklahoma State. They only allowed 20 points. They gave up almost 500 yards, but that was on 80 plays, and that was really just you know, in garbage time, really. I mean, this game was kind of put away by the time they started putting things together on offense where, you know, they completely held the rushing attack in check. It hasn't been phased too many times. 
They did face Makai Hughes and Tulane in Week 2, and had some issues, about 150 yards allowed in that one. This is a run defense that should have a fairly simple matchup. Brendan Mott at defensive end is probably their best lineman up front. Cody Stuffel being has been pretty good for them. Uso, Simalo, uh, an interior defensive line with a lot of size. I mean, there's no real standout. Uh, it's a pretty strong rotational unit, and I think Mott could probably be your one standout, but even he's not been uh, you know, as consistent in years past. But so far this year, you know, four sacks, five and a half TFL. I mean, he's been as good as it can get in terms of that consistency on a weekly basis this year. Certainly expected to see that last year, but you know, one year too late isn't bad at all because this is a team that still has high aspirations. So much your leader up front. Though the defense is what excites me the most. You start with Austin Romaine leading the team with 34 tackles. Also has four tackles for loss. Uh, the rest of the group behind him, you know, there's a lot of different guys that get involved. Austin Moore is a veteran who's been great against the run. Desmond Pertnell is a very good player. Uh, Bayou Palmer will get on the field on occasion. I, mean, I think this is linebacking group, a lot of different players. They're certainly bringing a lot of production to the table, a lot of experience from this linebacking group. Um, it'll certainly be interesting to see how they can handle, uh, you know, trying to contain Shitter if he escapes the pocket. Will, will they have a linebacker, you know, spying that can try to crack down and bring him to the floor? Because that's something that's really incredibly hard to do against these dual threats, especially with a poor offensive line. They're just so good at evading pressure. How will they do in the middle of the field in terms of tackling? I think they'll be pretty sound. I think this linebacking group is going to lead the way for Kansas State. And then their secondary, highly underrated group. I think it's one of the better ones in the country. You know, they did give up 350 plus against Oklahoma State. But again, a lot of garbage time yards there. The one against Tulane where they gave up 350 almost wasn't garbage time at all. They gave up some big plays. They weren't all that good. Thought they'd bounce back the next week against Arizona. And they did. You know, this is a team that's given up a solid amount of yards through the air. Um, but I think when you, in terms of situations, you know, what, what are, how is that happening? Because on the first drive, Arizona went right downfield and scored. Nothing the rest of the game. That 31-7 victory. And then, you know, of course, the blowout of Oklahoma State. So this is a secondary thing that's very impressive. You know, we got some of the guys who are standouts for them. It starts with cornerback, you know, Jacob Parrish, Heeman Keen, and Garber. Two veterans playing very good this year. Want to see them be more consistent in terms of tackling and better against the run. I think you're going to have to be very sound in trying to bring Hunter to the ground, of course. You know, horn on screens and whatnot. You're going to fight through blocks. I think these corners are certainly capable of playing with that level of aggression. Marquise Siegel, a veteran player in the slot. You know, having a little bit of a disappointing start to this season. He's a veteran. I think they should be able to count on as the year goes by. And, you know, they don't play too many, you know, reps in terms of, uh, you know, free safeties. Jordan Riley, VJ Payne. Um, kind of also having underwhelming starts to the year. Payne, though, is a guy that was phenomenal for them a season ago. Has an interception already this season. Um, they have a couple of guys who are capable of being ballparks. You know, Parrish is one of them. He also has one this season at four of them a season ago. Um, so I think this is a guy that you can certainly lean on to be a playmaker against a team that's going to look the air out a lot. Certainly going to throw the football a good bit. Um, this is a capable secondary, though. I like their chances in a game like this. Playing zone against this passing attack certainly isn't great. Playing man coverage obviously isn't any better with what they have, but I think if they can, you know, sit in patterns correctly, you know, they've had a week to watch tape. I think they're going to be able to jump on some things because this is a team that's well coached and they certainly have some good football IQ. So I think they'll have opportunities to create for themselves. Can they come down with the ball? Can they come away with pass deflections on critical downs? That will ultimately dictate this contest. Now you look to the Colorado defense starting with what they've accomplished against the run you know it's been impressive they have allowed 100 plus in every game this year but they have yet to allow 180 plus in a game this year the run defense has been very sound nebraska you know had 150 on them had a couple of big plays called back to help out that number in week one though they played a physical rushing attack in north dakota state you know, held them in check for the most part UCF this final last game very good 177 yards on almost you know 50 attempts very good numbers there this is a run defense that is certainly a much improved unit obviously a lot of transfers BJ Green Samuel Okunlola two phenomenal edge rushers they picked up I love what BJ Green brings to the table thought he'd be the biggest impact for them on this team and he certainly has so far Shane Cokes has been improved Dayon Hayes another one of those ads um, Amari McNeil, Arden Walker. I mean, they have a nice deep rotation here, and that does goes without mentioning Chidozi Nwankwo, I think, is probably their best player so far this year. You certainly want to make sure uh, you know he's going to be healthy for this one. Battled some injuries early on, but looks like he's a good go. I mean, he's been a good run defender his entire career coming over from Houston as a 290-pounder. So, I mean, this is a team that has well-established depth on the D-line. Now they have some better size. 
and they've certainly did a lot of that throughout the portal. But now they have some different guys they can get in there. They have talented players who are starters, so they can you know allow this rotation to kind of work a good bit. And they certainly have up until this point in terms of pass rushing. You know, 10 sacks this year, it's a respectable number. Half of those coming up against UCF and O-line. It certainly is a little shaky. And K.J. Jefferson, a bigger quarterback, he's a good runner, but he's certainly not as mobile in the pocket. So they did a good job bringing him to the ground. Avery Johnson, though, complete opposite. I mean, this is a guy who's incredibly shifty with a lot of speed. So being able to contain him is going to be interesting because the pass rush before that game was less than stellar, even though B.J. Green, a uh, very good edge rusher. Um, so we'll see what happens with the pass rushing group in this one. The linebacking group for Colorado been very good. Nakai Hill Green, second on the team in tackles. Avante Bentley has been great at shooting gaps. Um, only two TFL, but when you watch him play, it seems like he has a lot more. He creates a lot for other players as well, so it's not always going to show up on the stat sheet. But his improvements against the run are certainly noted. I think uh, you know Hill Green as well is playing some very good football in terms of run stopping ability. So it's a collective effort so far for Colorado. Got to be impressed with what you're seeing. Uh, Cameron Selma and Craig, you know, he's a safety, but he plays in the box a lot. You know, he's certainly going to be important, um, you know, especially with no Shiloh Sanders. This is a guy who does a great job in terms of run fits and not having him in games like this is certainly crucial. So it's nice to see everyone else step up and, you know, make a collectively impressive effort against the run this far. They look at the Colorado secondary. They started off the year on a quite bumpy note against the Bison. I mean, they were getting torched for some reason against that passing attack. It shouldn't have happened. You know, they're giving up way too much free space. Um, that's something you saw last year a lot. Way too many completions early on in the year. Since then, they've rebounded. They certainly haven't played, you know, the flashiest of passing attacks. And they're not going to face a flashy one here either. Um, but, you know, Travis Hunter, of course, playing every single snap. He's been tremendous in all regards. DJ McKinney has played even more than that at corner. He's been good. You know, he's been all right for them. Um, Colton Hood, on the other hand, he's the guy who will get on the field the third most at corner. He's no good at all. He's a good target for the opposing defense. Preston Hodge, a little bumpy of a start, you know, for this season. He's been a really poor tackler. Hasn't been as great against the run, but he's a guy who can be a high-end playmaker in coverage. He certainly has done that at a pretty respectable tune. He's going to be manning your slot here. Of course, alluded to Selman Craig at safety, um, but Carter Stratemeyer plays that position a lot. I think he's a bit of a weakness, so they could target as well. Uh, you know, Jason Brown brings a lot of speed to the table. That's the guy they're going to look to try and uncork uh, downfield. Overall, this is a talented second year for Colorado, though. And of course, it's led by the aforementioned Hunter, who's tremendous in terms of just his ability to cover one side of the field and make plays. Uh, you know, of course, he forced that fumble against Baylor that won them the game. Uh, you know, has two interceptions this season. You know, this is a guy that has elite ball skills. Not a player that usually gets tested too much. Had a pick against Baylor of, or against UCF in the past game. So. Coming off a week of rest for a guy that plays every single snap, it's not ideal for Kansas State to try and attack this guy. Um, but, you know, with the rushing attack, they're going to try to wear this defense down. They're going to try and run a lot of plays. And so far, Colorado hasn't folded against the run, uh, you know, nearly as much as they would have a season ago. They're just getting absolutely brutalized. So it's now a competitive run defense. Certainly not perfect by any means. It's not elite. It's not overwhelming. Um, but they've been playing some very good football and certainly expect that to continue even though this is a phenomenal rushing attack they're facing, they're not going to get you know brutalized in this game, I wouldn't imagine. I don't think 300 yards or anything like that is what you'll see. Moving to the tail of the tape, the team comparisons. You know, Every time I do these for Colorado, it's a clear edge at quarterback and wide receiver. And then it starts to get a little shaky for them in terms of you know comparisons on the rest of the roster. Running back, easy edge for KSU. In the trenches, they're better. Linebacker, DB, you know, I think across the board, top to bottom, they're the better roster. Maybe you can make the argument for Colorado on the D-line because they have been much improved against the run, and they're getting good you know, help out of you know, a couple of different guys. Pass rush certainly isn't as polished up until this moment, and I think Kansas State certainly is playing some with some. They have better toughness and better consistency from their D-line. Now you look at the final thoughts and the prediction. Keys to the game for KSU, the run game dominance has to continue and you got to find consistent pass rush and I think in terms of continuation for Colorado you know produce heavily through the air and force the Wildcats in the long passing situations I just don't think they'll do that enough I think Colorado certainly proven they can be competitive even in a lot of losses last year they were um Kansas State right now I just think they're just a notch ahead the game against BYU it was a pure fluke you know it was one where they just pretty much gave it away a game that was firmly in control for them until they started making foolish mistakes, and I don't think they're going to do that now. I think they're certainly, you know, after a big game and a bye week, they're going to play with much better confidence, much better continuity on offense. 
It's a good rushing attack. They're going to have a variety of different looks to kind of keep Colorado on their heels. And it seemed like UCF was going to do that as well. They just don't have the threat in the passing game. And I think, you know, I'm not saying Kansas State has an overwhelming effect either, but it's certainly to a higher tune of what they call an offense. Um, so I'm going to take Colorado to lose this one by 10. Kansas State to get the victory on the road. I think they're just a step ahead right now. Threat is polished in terms of, you know, depth on their entire roster. Um, and I think so far, this is a team that's going to certainly be able to contest them in terms of balance. I think it's going to be a tough defense, the toughest one they've seen so far this year outside of Nebraska, where they didn't play very good. So being at home is certainly a big factor for them, something Kansas State has struggled with this year. But I think they're certainly, you know, now that they're entering October, they're going to play with a better emphasis on, you know, discipline and consistency. Kansas State will get the job done. That's going to be it for today's episode. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.